In honour of the late great Marvellous Marvin Hagler, I would like to look back on the Marvellous One's greatest night and possibly the sport's best ever fight. Hagler Hearns, the fight, the war. Let's do this. Marvellous Marvin Hagler's journey to Thomas Hitman Hearns was a hard one. Debuting in 1973, Hagler was matched tough right from the start. Notably fighting Olympic gold medalist Sugar Ray Seals in his 15th fight and losing a tight decision to good fighters such as Bobby Watts and Willie Monroe. Although Hagler would go on to avenge both these losses in rematches. Remarkably, Marvellous Marvin didn't fight for a world title until his 50th contest back in 1979. Here he challenged WBC and WBA middleweight world champion Vito Antufermo. The fight ended in a controversial draw which many felt Hagler should have won. Even when Hagler did finally win the world middleweight title at his second attempt against Anti Fermo's conqueror, Alan Minter, in 1980, he disgracefully had beer and bottles thrown at him after his victory, which further fueled Hagler to feel that his hard work, talent, and achievements were not being respected or recognised. Arguably, Hagler's coming out fight was his points decision win over Roberto Hand of Stone. Duran back in 1983. However, even that win ended up being overshadowed by his rival to be Tommy Hitman Hearns when he knocked out Duran within two rounds in spectacular fashion only a year later. By the time Tommy Hearns met Marvin Hagler, he was a former welterweight world champion and the reigning WBC junior middleweight champion of the world. Tommy had a fight record of 40 wins, 34 of those wins coming by a way of knockout and his only defeat came at the hands of Sugar Ray Leonard via a 14th round stoppage in the welterweight division back in the autumn of 1981. Hagler Hearns was originally scheduled for 1982 but a finger injury to Thomas Hearns saw the fight cancelled. This frustrated Hagler, accusing Thomas Hearns of making excuses to not fight him, but this ultimately helped build the fight. Reason being that after the Leonard defeat, Hearns moved up to light middleweight and rebuilt his reputation by having key wins against the likes of Wilfred Benitez and most notably Roberto Duran. With Leonard retired at this stage and Duran in decline, this meant that by the time Hagler and Hearns met in 1985, it was a huge, intriguing mega fight. The fight took place on the 15th of April 1985 at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, and it was for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. When the bell rang to bring in the first round, both fighters looked to take centre ring and Hagler swung with a big right hand, put his head down and marched forward towards Tommy, forcing him backwards. Tommy initially tried to jab and box, but soon found himself at the ropes and began unleashing a flurry of strong right hands, including an uppercut that appeared to momentarily buzz Marvin Hagler. The pair then traded off against each other, throwing big swinging hooks, wild, breathtaking action. With a minute to go in the first round, Hagler continued to walk Hearns down, and the hitman responded with a right hand that opened a big cut to Marvin's forehead, which instantly saw blood pour out. Hagler, unfazed, continued to move forward and managed to maneuver Hearns to the corner once more where he threw hooks to head and body and although Hearns would occasionally fire back was being zapped of his energy 
having to defend. Right at the end of the round, Hagler threw a short right-left combination that appeared to have buzzed Ernst, but he survived. One of the best rounds boxing has seen was complete. When the fighters went back to their corners, naturally cameras and coverage went straight to Hagler to see how bad his cut was. However, there was concerns within Tommy Hearns' corner as well, with Tommy informing trainer Emmanuel Stewart that he had broken his right hand on one of his punches to Marvin's rock-solid bald head. The second round started with Hagler jumping in on Hearns and landing. After this, Hearns switched his approach to stay more on the outside and try and keep the fight long by jabbing at Hagler to both his head and body. Hagler continued to stalk and hunt Hearns down. Moving from Southpaw to Orthodox, Hearns was doing a decent job controlling the distance, but got a bit reckless towards the final 30 seconds of the round and saw Hagler come on strong once more with a big left hand that shook the hitman. Hagler pressed the action, forcing Hearns to the ropes once again and with around 20 seconds to go, caught Hearns with a right-left combo followed by a right hook that all hit the target. When the bell rang to end the second, Hearns smiled at Hagler as if to say it didn't affect him, but his legs looked weak when he moved back to his corner, giving a completely different story. The third round saw Hearns try and start fast, but switch hitter Hagler came out orthodox and landed right hands, and the fight was starting to develop into the same pattern as the second. However, 30 seconds into the third, referee Richard Steele, concerned with Marvelous Marvin's cut, asked the doctor, Donald Romeo, to look at it. The doctor was satisfied that the fight could continue and we continued where we left off with Hagler taking the center of the ring and Hearns trying to box from distance. By the halfway point of the round, Hagler caught Tommy Hearns with a thumping right on the side of the head which wobbled Hearns, sent him across the ring, doing a little drunken jog to the ropes. Hagler instinctively ran towards Hearns, swarmed all over him, hitting Hearns with two big rights that saw Hearns drop to the canvas. The hitman fell on his back and then struggled to get back up, just about making the 10 count, but referee Richard Steele stopped the fight. Hearns exhausted, Hagler was victorious. An astonishing 339 punches were thrown between these two legendary fighters in just eight minutes of action. Hagler landing around 55% and Hearns landing 57 of his shots. Remarkable fight, remarkable action, one of the best fights. Right from the off, this fight was fought at a very high pace. Both boxers having moments of success and having toe-to-toe -to -toe action at times as well. It was originally promoted as just the fight, but it's more fondly got the nickname, the war, because of what these two fantastic boxers were able to deliver, especially in that first round. A fantastic fight with both putting it all on the line, giving it their all and respecting each other afterwards. One of the best fights in boxing history, for sure. Right up there with the best. So there you have it, the fight, the war, that was Hagler Hearns. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great evening and God bless my friend.